In this video, I'm gonna talk about what clean eating is, why I personally gave it up, and why I don't recommend it to my clients anymore. Hi, it's Ivana, helping you get fit, healthy, and strong at any age. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while because giving up clean eating was actually how I managed to stabilize my weight after the massive struggles of my 20s when I was up and down and binge eating. And now I've found a way to be able to maintain my weight and I no longer have to do clean eating. Most of the time it refers to eating primarily whole foods. So things like lean meats, lots of vegetables, fruit, probably whole grains, but not processed refined grains like rice and white bread. Then you're also going to have nuts and seeds. You're gonna to try to avoid sugar. Normally unsweetened dairy is okay. This is the most commonly accepted definition of clean eating, but there are some variations and different proponents of this philosophy will give you slightly different ideas about how it works. You're pretty much eliminating all the highly processed foods that many people enjoy, including myself. So I start with my favorites, things like ice cream and chocolate. And then for other people, it might be French fries or chips or chicken wings with lots of barbecue sauce. Pretty much all those fun foods that I like to call treat foods. Weight loss comes down to a calorie deficit. There is no way around that. Getting a calorie deficit, however, can have many, many strategies. And clean eating is one of the strategies that people People propose for helping people to lose weight. The first problem with clean eating is that there's no scientific definition. Most people will say it means just eating whole foods or less processed or unprocessed foods. All food is processed to some extent, unless you're biting the side off a cow for your hamburger, or you're actually pulling that apple off the tree, then your food has been processed in some way. It's probably been packaged. So in the literature, they refer more to highly processed foods and also hyper palatable foods. So super tasty foods that are a combination of fat and sugar. People think sugar is the the enemy, but most of those things that they think of as sugar sources also have a lot of fat. So it's the combination that tastes so good. And that's what makes us overeat those particular foods. In some circumstances with clean eating, you can have what's called a cheat meal. So all week you're eating all these healthy whole foods. And then on Saturday, you have either a cheat day or just a cheat meal where you're just going nuts and having all the processed foods you want, just anything that possibly can dream of and you've probably been dreaming about it all week because you've been depriving yourself of these things that you really want so here's the first thing that I don't like about the system the cheat meal and the cheat day I don't really like the idea of cheating in the first place. And the whole fact that you have to cheat on your diet means that you don't really have a diet that actually works for you. So you've got a lot of things missing from your diet that you really want and that would bring you pleasure. I don't wanna say that this doesn't work for some people and it did work for me at certain periods of time. I did manage to eat really, really well throughout the week and then I would just go nuts on Saturday go back to things on Sunday, and I somehow managed to kind of be in a good position and lose weight for a period of time. For the kind of people who are very disciplined, like physique athletes, bodybuilders, that sort of thing, they've got a very regimented plan, and then they might just have one cheat meal, and that works for them as a system. But you're talking about the 1% when it comes to nutrition. Most of the people that I work with are normal people who have to deal with having food available at the office, having their kids bring home certain things, or having to buy things for their kids that are gonna be sitting on that shelf staring at them over and over every day. It's not always easy to maintain that discipline if you're just living a day-to-day -day life that doesn't revolve around your food and training. Most of us are not doing that. We need a bit more flexibility in our lifestyle. I really think it makes a lot more sense to have a balanced diet where 80% of what you're eating is usually that those lean proteins, lots of vegetables, some whole grains and nuts and seeds and that type of thing. And then about 10 to 20%, depending on your goals, is going to be foods that I dub 
treat foods. So that's my positive way of looking at it rather than a cheap food. I have a positive association with those foods. They're part of my own personal experience, but they're also often part of a social experience. I love eating with my family and we enjoy those same foods. We'll sit there and each have a bowl of ice cream and you don't necessarily want to miss out on all those things just to lose weight and you don't have to. Now the reason that clean eating tends to work, at least initially, is that you're eliminating all these highly processed refined foods that are very calorie dense. A donut might have 200 or 250 calories. Some ice cream, which goes down really, really easy. Back in my 20s when I was eating quite a lot, I could have two Ben & Jerry's cartons at a time. And if you total up the calories for that, it was pretty much a day's worth of calories. So it's no wonder that I couldn't maintain my weight that way. In clean eating, you just eliminate all those things, not having any ice cream, not having any french fries, not having any chips, not having any chocolate, unless I think in some cases, if it's dark chocolate, then a small amount is allowed. There's arbitrary rules that are thrown out here and there, which is a problem with clean eating as a way of eating. There are so many rules that you're not quite sure what it's supposed to be. You're actually getting leaner through producing a calorie deficit and you can produce that in many ways. If you produce that by having one chocolate bar a day, but then eating chicken breasts and broccoli and egg whites the rest of the day, then that's fine. You're still producing a calorie deficit. And I also wanna mention that when I was doing this, I had all these ideas in my head as well. I was like, oh, if I don't stay clean, whoa, I'm gonna to start to build up the fat. I'm gonna to start to put on weight. And that's what I had in my head all the time. And it really becomes a mental struggle to the point where you can become obsessive with food. And you're like, oh, is this food clean? Can I eat it? I'm not sure, like it has a bit of sauce. Is that okay? The idea that you don't wanna add like even 50 calories that's gonna help this chicken breast go down, it seems a little bit silly to me. I use barbecue sauce on my chicken breast because it's delicious and it really helps me get like 40 grams of protein in because it's so much more tasty that way. So suffering through everything by having dry chicken breasts all the time, which is a philosophy that a lot of people think is what's required to get lean. It's not. I gave up clean eating because I realized I didn't have to do it. And I wanted to develop a healthier relationship with food. This is one of my biggest criticisms of clean eating. You see foods as good or bad. And that to me isn't the way to do things. It's just food. Unless you have a severe allergy, a small amount of a particular food is not a big disaster and it doesn't need to send you spiraling. That's exactly what it used to do for me. Once I had had a little bit of a particular food that I enjoyed, all of a sudden I was binging on that food and I threw away that clean eating thing until I could get myself back on track again and eat nothing but clean food again. And that kind of cycle happened to me for years and I have a lot of clients who've been through the same thing. You're forcing yourself to do something that doesn't make sense and isn't necessary for weight loss or your health. Your diet should be sustainable for you. It should include the foods that you enjoy. You shouldn't be constantly deprived in order to lose weight. If you like the sound of that, please hit that thumbs up for me. You do end up eating a lot more healthy, whole foods, fewer processed foods when you try to lose weight anyway. That's how you bring yourself into a calorie deficit. You reduce your calorie intake. You increase increase your protein and you adjust your carbs and fat. As long as those things happen, then it doesn't have to be 100% clean all the time. Those were my thoughts on clean eating. What do you think? If you're looking for more guidance with your nutrition, check out the videos I've linked here.